Looking for amazing products to help boost your first class lifestyle? Then head over to firstclasslifeshop.com where you can treat yourself to personal development books and workbooks, lifestyle affirmation cards, adult coloring books, mugs, notebooks, hoodies, t-shirts, leggings, and more. All products were designed to help you master your mindset, walk in your purpose, and live your first class life because you deserve it. So treat yourself today at firstclasslifeshop.com. Again, that's firstclasslifeshop.com. Leadership is one, taking care of yourself as a leader. You are not a good leader if you're not taking care of yourself. And I know that just stepped on somebody's toes. You, you are not a good leader if you are not taking care of yourself. That is poor leadership. Mm -hmm. So you need to reevaluate some things. And, and sometimes we can't take care of ourselves because we have too much on our plate from other people, whether it be relationship, whether it be job, whether it be family, whatever it is. Sometimes when we are overwhelmed and out of sorts with ourselves, we have to sit down and look at our plate and say, what's one thing I could take off my plate? Right. And it might be something fun. Maybe you don't need to go to the bar and have martinis. Maybe your body is telling you you are dehydrated because alcohol dehydrates you. Maybe your body is saying instead of going out to that Sunday brunch with your girls drinking unlimited mimosas, maybe you need to go to the spa. Right. You know, just sit by yourself. And one thing we don't like to do, a lot of us. You're listening to the First Class Life Show hosted by Lindsay Vertner a holistic personal development show for high achieving leaders who desire to maximize their impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. So grab a drink, grab your notebook, and let's get started. Hey, 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 welcome back to another episode of the First Class Life Show with your host, Lindsay Vertner, that is me. And today we have a gorgeous guest by the name of Trey Kearney, and we are really going to have a great discussion. I know that she has a lot of knowledge and gems to share with the First Class family, so you know how we do. We don't got time to play. We're going to hop right into this discussion because we need to maximize our impact and we need to create our life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness so we don't have time to waste, okay? <laughs> so welcome, Trey. How are you? I am great. I am awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Lindsay. I'm so happy to be here. And I love, 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 love your energy. Yes. Thank you, girl. You know, we got to bring it for the first class family. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, peel back the curtains and give us the goods. Like who is Trey Kearney? Okay. I am a woman of God. I am a mother of three boys. I'm a boy mom. I have two children on the autism spectrum. So I am an awesome mom because I am their caregiver, I am their guide, and I am here to hold their hand on their journey. I am a certified life and um, executive leadership coach. I help women and families heal through the devastation of infidelity. That is my life's purpose. And I believe my purpose is to serve the people that God assigned to me through my gifts, my talents, and my experiences. So that is one major area of my life where I am very, very purpose driven. And that is to help families heal from the devastation of infidelity and betrayal. Oh, okay. So listen, we don't often hear about this topic now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit more, like take us on that journey. How did you get into the devastation of infidelity? And, and before you start there, let me just uh, preface my first class family, I know that we are all high achieving leaders. And here's the thing about the first class life show. This is a holistic personal development show and all of these things affect us as leaders. And so it's important that we address the hush hush. It's important that we address the taboo because even when we try to put it away in a box and pretend like it didn't happen or to ignore it, 
it still shows up subconsciously in our interactions, in our behaviors, in our thought patterns, in our beliefs. And so that's why I love my guests because we go there, okay? We keep it raw and we keep it candid and it is all for your benefit, for our benefit to grow and support one another together in all the areas. So yes. stick around because I know it's going to be good, okay? Yes. <laughs> so go right ahead, Trey. So uh, I'm so glad that you support high achieving leaders because high achieving leaders hurt too when mm -hmm. they are betrayed. And one of the things that um, we as high achieving leaders, boss women and men, we don't really deal with matters of the heart because we're so busy um, elevating in our careers, but it affects us in our jobs. It affects our bottom line. It affects our money. It affects our productivity when our matters of the heart at home are not handled properly, when we are going through devastation, it's hard to be productive. So I got here by way of committing adultery. Mm. I cheated on my husband many years ago, my ex-husband um, many years ago, maybe 17 years ago now. And I left my home to go to with another man who was also married and the devastation that it caused both families, his ex-wife, my ex-husband, their families, there was a terrible trickle down. When mm. people see infidelity, they think it's two people that cheated and they're the only two affected or the four people are affected. But it trickled down to all of our families. All four families were affected. It trickled down to the production of his ex-wife's mother, to the production of my ex-husband's business. It separated and severed ties and families. So as I saw the devastation, I went on a journey of self-awareness of why I would do something like that, right? Because once once we commit, um, once we make a bad decision, we have to figure out what instilled that in us, what would make us think that that was okay. So I come from a very dysfunctional background. And again, I'm never blaming my mother. I'm never blaming people because blame causes guilt. Accountability causes growth. So I wanted to be accountable for my actions of why I would think that this was normal behavior. So I went on a journey of self-discovery and figured out, you know, my stepdad was married to another woman and he lived with us. He was never divorced until the day he died in a bed with my mom from a heart attack. And his ex-wife came and took everything. But that was normal for me, Lindsay, that my stepfather was there married to another woman on the other side of town. And he was my dad. He lived there with us. So why wouldn't I think in my nine-year-old mind going into my 30s or 40s, if I had not dealt with that, again, if you don't deal with it, it will continue to deal with me that that wasn't normal. So when I wasn't getting what I thought I should get at home, one, I was immature to communicate with my ex-husband. Two, this was the norm for me that this is what you do. When you're not getting what you want, you go get what you want and the heck with everybody else. So that's how I got on my journey. And the man that I cheated with my husband with cheated on me several times over and over again. And the pain that I caused them, right? My ex-husband and his ex-wife devastated me more than the pain that was caused to me by the man I left with because I couldn't believe I had caused that kind of trauma on two other people. So it sent me into a prison of guilt because I felt so bad for them. And we, we learn a lesson. A lot of times we learn a lesson from it happening to us, right? Had I not felt that pain, maybe I wouldn't have cared. But I felt the pain and the devastation of betrayal. And then I just went on a journey and I started going live and just talking about it. And people started following it. And more and more women started saying, me too, from both angles. Me too, I cheated on my husband. Me too, I've been betrayed by a man. So I thought it was necessary to help families heal from the devastation of infidelity or to be able to stop it before it even happened. Mm, you said so many things, like <laughs> we go so many different directions. And you know, one, I, I'm, I'm glad that you're bringing this to light because oftentimes when we look at infidelity, we think of um, you know the man cheating on the woman. We don't usually hear about the woman cheating on the man. And like you said, we think of just it affecting the two, um, the two cheaters and their partners. We don't think about the ripple effect that it has on everybody else that are, are connected to those four people. We don't think about the toll that it has on the inside, the emotional toll that it takes. So you mentioned about. Um, if you hadn't went through that pain, then maybe you wouldn't have cared. 
Tell us a little bit more about that emotional process. The process of not knowing how someone feels, right? It it makes you kind of sort of not on purpose, lack empathy and compassion because you just don't know how that feels, right? I just, I told you too, I have two sons on the spectrum, on the autism spectrum. And before when I would see children in the store acting up or before when I would see children having strange behaviors or unusual behaviors, I should say, I would look and be like, that mother needs to do something with that child. That child is screaming in the supermarket and acting up in a restaurant. Until I was in that situation of being an autism mom, I didn't have the compassion and empathy to think maybe that child is on the spectrum. Maybe that child has developmental delay issues, or maybe that child is, is going through something. Maybe that family is going through something. So until we experience a lot of things, we don't have compassion and empathy for people. We have to learn how to go into ourselves and say, Maybe this is not what it looks like, right? All that glitters is not gold. Every package, you could be beautiful on the outside and a wretched mess on the inside. And I just want to express to people that we have to learn how to be um, ex have acceptance for people's behaviors when we don't know. We have to be more mindful of maybe that's not what it looks like, right? And it took me being hurt that way. It took me being have, having children on a spectrum to understand these different aspects of other people's lives. So once we go through it, we usually are, it's usually meant for us to go on a journey to help somebody out. It's usually for us to go on a journey of being the light at the end of somebody's trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being the light at the end of somebody's trouble, that, that's good right there because we are all in this together. We like to think that we're in our own little separate worlds, but in reality, we are all connected to one another. We are all on this earth um, to serve one another. And so um, it's very important that we use our stories to help other people. We use the things that we've overcome and the things that we've been through to help other people. So it's important that we address them and that we heal and so as you had your emotional turmoil, um, what were some of those steps that you took to start to overcome everything that you had been through? One step I took was just a, self, a, a, a journey of self-discovery to say, let me, let me go back to my blueprint, right? And everybody should do this, of growing up in a home. We all grew up, right? You grew up in a different lens than me. You're another person whose father or mother was in the military grew up very different than I did, differently than I did. I grew up in a dysfunctional family where there was a lot of party and we was a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol. So I had to go on, the first step was to go on a journey of self-discovery to say, what is your blueprint? Is your blueprint correct? Because so many of us, Lindsay, think that dysfunction is normal because it's all that we've seen. So I had to go back, look at myself and say, where did this idea come from? And is the idea correct? Can I change this idea? Why would I do that? Why does it make me feel bad? If it is my blueprint, I have to find out why it makes me feel bad. So my first step was to go on a journey of self-discovery. My second step was holding myself accountable for my poor behavior, stopping the blame game. Well, my mother was an alcoholic and nobody ever loved me. And my sister did this. And this man over here, my boyfriend ex did that. He damaged me. It was a, a level of accountability that I had to accept for myself that I am where I am based on my choices at this age, right? We 12, 13, 17, we could blame people. But at the age where I committed adultery, I was, I believe, 40. And that was a choice that I made. It was a, it was a poor choice and I didn't know, I didn't have decision-making skills. That's number three. We have to understand that there are some skills that we did not obtain in life, right? From the, from the journey of leaving our parents' house to the journey of going to secondary education into the workforce, there's this gap there where they don't teach you certain things, like life skills. And when we think of life skills, a lot of times we think life skills is cooking, washing clothes, but life skills is decision-making, communication, empathy. These, these are life skills that nobody's developing for us, and that <laughs> gap is there. So we have to make sure we're aware of what life skills we lack. So I went on that journey of self-discovery, accountability. I got a life coach and I love my life coach, Dr. DC Marshall. I hope I can shout her out because she broke, she woke up in me that what I lacked was life skills. And this is why I was making poor decisions because I didn't have decision-making skills. I wasn't weighing the pros and cons. I was doing whatever I thought was best for me in the moment, not 
who is this going to hurt? How is this going to affect my future? What does this look like in 10 years? I didn't know all of that. I was just like, I'm not liking this. It don't feel good to me. So I'm going to do that. And there's always going to be consequences to our actions, whether they're good consequences or bad consequences, they're going to show up because we reap what we sow. And a lot of times um, when we're talking about um, high achieving leaders, we take them, we take the personal out of that. We take their per we take their heart out of that. We take their soul out of that because we see a high achieving in business and education, but they have hearts, they have souls. And I, I get so tired of people thinking that, you know, executive women, high functioning executive women in high places don't feel. Boss ladies, whatever you want to call them, CEOs, on high level entrepreneurs, they have feelings, they have hearts, they go through emotional things. They lose children, right? Along the journey, whether it be physically losing them or emotionally, or they, their kids go on a, 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 a path, a journey that's not so good. They lose husbands, they get cheated on, and they have to still function in a high le at a high level. So we have to be mindful of that, the people around them that I want to pour into you spiritually and emotionally to make sure that you are okay. And I learned along my journey too that another thing that I needed to do was ask for help. Mm, yeah. We struggle as high achieving women asking for help because we got to be superwoman. We got to do all of it. I got. I can't let anybody know that I need help. Well, like, like, they would think that I'm weak. No. The strongest thing you can do is ask for help. It's a sign of strength. Like I can't do everything by myself. Yeah, that is really good. And you know, I we had another guest on the first class live show that mentioned that leadership can be a lonely place. And in what you just said, that thought popped in my head because oftentimes when we are doing all the things and we are achieving and we are serving and we are, you know, impacting our family or our friends or our coworkers or our clients or, you know, however we serve in the world, uh, we feel like, well, when it's my turn to be served, who can we turn to? And right. we don't have our help because we feel uh, weak. Yeah. We feel like, well, if I'm constantly helping, well, then they can't help me. Or if I ask them for help, then they're going to see me differently. We we dismiss everything that we've done in the past. It's, <laughs> and we you just know what? Not to cut you off. Differently. You know what? Not to cut you off, but it's like a person who's sick, like who's um has a terminal illness. And I've dealt with two people, my mother and my best friend. I was their caretaker until they passed from cancer. One word that they always use, and I think this is our mentality too as high achievers, I don't want to be a burden. Mm, You're not yeah. a burden to anybody. You're not a burden to the person who wants to be there and help you. So we have to learn that maybe somebody is going to say no, but there's also somebody that's going to say yes. And I just want so many people to hear this. Stop thinking in your mind, I don't want to be a burden. You are not a burden to anybody. You're not a burden to the right people. Your yes is out there. There is somebody that is here to serve you. As we serve, there are people who are going to come and serve us. And we have to be willing to accept that help. And we have to be willing to ask for that help. And we also have to be willing to offer that help. I've learned to offer help now because I know high achieving women, they're not asking for help. So I've learned to, when I'm speaking to a high achieving woman, or I'm speaking to a woman who's a CEO, or when I'm speaking to a woman who, um, is in leadership roles. I ask them, what do you need? Is there anything I could do for you? How can I serve you? And it gives them that door to say, hey, you know what? I've been feeling this way, or maybe you can help me with this, or maybe my children are this, or maybe my husband is this. It's so much better to offer than to wait for somebody to ask. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good to be intentional about uh, offering help as well. And, you know, they might not accept it, but that's something that people have to individually come to terms with being willing to accept that help. So that makes me think of a question in, in talking with our first class family. For those that have trouble asking, accepting and offering help, what are some steps that we can take to help us better receive help? We'll start with that one. Some steps you could take to better receive help is to not feel like a burden, just to not feel like a burden. And another step that you could take is to not be afraid of a no. Right. Listen, man's rejection is God's protection. Some people are supposed to say no to you. And it, that is to build your resilience muscle. Right. We, we have to take steps to get out of our own head. That's another step to take. Get out of your own head of what are they thinking? 
what are they going to say? I call it being in the weeds of the what ifs. Come out of the weeds of the what ifs, right? Because you will what if yourself to death. You will what if yourself out of help. When you should say, if you're going to say what if, switch it around and say, what if they do help me? Mm -hmm. Change your mindset. Switch off that negativity. That negativity will have you on an island by yourself. And most of the time when we get to that point, we have to be on our back in order for us to get the help. Don't don't have don't let don't go on your back. Don't don't have to be put on your back. I remember um years ago, um years ago, maybe five or six years ago, maybe longer, I was overwhelmed doing too much as a leader, as a boss. And I had ran my body down to the ground to the point where I ended up in the hospital for three days, all because I wouldn't ask for help. But your body will shut down on you and say, oh, you're you going to keep going this? You're going gonna to keep going hard. And they have this saying, sleep till you die. Um, yeah, sleep when you die. No, we need sleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So just, we, we need sleep. And, and there's all these cliches out here that tell us to work, 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 work. Don't stop. Grind, grind, grind. Sleeping is part of the grind, okay? Mm -hmm. Mental wellness is part of the grind. Taking care of yourself is part of the grind. Don't let nobody tell you sleep when you die. I need y'all, I need all my girls, all my guys, I need y'all to get some rest and I need you to get the proper rest or your body is going to shut you down. Yes, I can think clearly the hashtag team no sleep. Girl. Um. <laughs> Girl, the team that I want to be no. on, okay? <laughs> team, I'm going to go to bed at 9 o'clock. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not going to bed that early, but I do like my sleep, okay? Well, I'm a woman of a certain age. You're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I have been a night owl all my life, and so I'm probably just going to sleep when other people are just waking <laughs> up. And, yeah, when I go to bed early before a certain time, my body is like, girl, are you sick? You need help. You need right. services. <laughs> Why are you laying down right now? <laughs> that is hilarious. I've always, always been the type where I'd much rather stay up later rather than wake up earlier. And even when I try to flip it around, it's like I'm still tired and groggy. It's like, why even fight it? Let me just embrace embrace what my body likes. That's it. <laughs> but I know I'm glad that you know your body. The point is, it doesn't matter when you get the rest, is when is that you are getting the rest. If your rest right. is better, if you know your clock says to you, I need to sleep in the morning from seven to three, then you know your body. And I'm up working nights, you know your body, but you but you are getting rest. And that's the important thing. Rest is necessary. Very, very necessary. And you know, it always hurts my heart whenever people are like, you know. I don't get any sleep and it's like okay well we need to get to the root problem of why you aren't getting sleep is it your mind is it your emotions is it your physical like do you need to go to a doctor do you need to go to a therapist like what's going on because sleep is important and you might not need eight hours of sleep like somebody but you need at least five or six yes. okay Five or six is the bare minimum. Yes. <laughs> and you kind of go up from there. Like I can do good on seven hours, but that seven hours needs to be at a certain time. Like, cause if I go to bed early and, and have that seven hours, I still wake up feeling some type of way. But if I go to bed around one or two or three and I have that seven hours, I wake up feeling rejuvenated. Yes. And so, like you said, knowing your body. Yes, is important. You have to know your body. What, what advice would you give to everybody listening um, about ways that we can begin to know our bodies in re in regards to getting enough rest and helping us in that area? Your body speaks to you, and we were we were just talking about this um, last night. I was talking about this last night with some of my girls that we are so in tune with our bodies physically. Like our bodies will tell us, "I'm not feeling well because I have a stomach ache," right or I'm not feeling well because I have a headache. Most of those ailments come from mental mental um, problems. You know, you're not dealing with your mental health, right? When you are stressed out, your joints will hurt. Your body is speaking to you. This is how you know your body. Like if your joints are hurting or your back is hurting or you have gut issues or even bleeding gums, these are signs of getting to know your body, right? When these things start to happen, you need to... Um, 
Think about what happened before this happened, right? I got this migraine, right? This is how you know your body. I got this migraine. What happened before? Like with me, I got a migraine. What happened? Okay, my son was acting out, right? He's on the spectrum. So this is what triggered me to have this headache. So I needed to breathe in that moment, right? Instead of freaking out like, oh my goodness, why is he doing this? I needed to breathe in that moment. My body is telling me that. Or if my back is hurt, what is going on? Why is my back hurting? Am I stressing over money? Right, is my, my lower back is hurting? Am I stressing over money? What am I stressing over? This is how you get to know your body. When your body starts to speak to you, you ask yourself these questions. Why did this start? When did this start? Right? You know, I had some like, uh, what do you call it? Acid reflux. Right? I was going through something with one of my sons, and it started to affect my gut. Right? And I was just like, I never had acid reflux. And I said, when did this start? <laughs> right? And I'm like, when did this start? And what do I need to do? And then I started thinking about my, the, the thing that was going on with my son was stressing me. So I said, oh, my body is telling me that mentally I'm exhausted. Mentally, my body is telling me that I'm stressed out. So I need to do something different so I don't have this acid reflux. Maybe I don't need medication as of yet. And if you need medication, that is okay. Mentally, spiritually, if you need medication, folks, and you go to your therapist, don't let anybody tell you about it. you don't need no medication because they ain't doctors, they ain't therapists. And I just had to bring myself back from what was going on with my son to say, okay, this is affecting me. It's making my body act a certain way. So be aware of what your body is telling you, right? You you know your body's telling you something, right? Like if something goes on with you and you're like, what? what? Why am I feeling like this? Because something's either going on mentally or physically with you. If you're exhausted, you need sleep, right? If you're stressed out, you need to go to the gym. Or if you're stressed out, you need to go to the chiropractor. Like when I'm stressed, I know my body, like my neck. I'm like, okay, I need to go get my neck cracked or something. But your body speaks to you. And that's the way you get to know your body by actually just listening to the physical things that are happening to you. Because usually it comes from a mental situation that you're not willing to deal with or you're really just um, ignoring your mental state of mind. So listen, I'm gonna need you to walk with me with what I'm about to say next, okay? Because, <laughs> all right. So as you were saying that, what popped in my head was committing adultery on yourself, um, infidelity on yourself, and and that's just what I kept hearing as you were just saying that. Like we opened the show talking about you know that physical direct infidelity against your partner. But oftentimes, I, and I think especially as leaders, we commit infidelity upon ourselves. And what I mean by that is that we don't listen to our bodies. We don't listen to our emotions. We don't listen to the cues that um, our, our brain and our mental and our emotion and our physical, all of those things are telling us about things that we need to change in our lives. And so we cheat on Sounds. ourselves with our titles or we cheat on ourselves with um, the expectations of other people or, you know, just different things like that. You probably yes, know yes, me. girl. That's are you loving the First Class Live show? Then join our private Patreon community. Not only will you help to support our ability to provide you with great content, but you can also get exclusive perks like bonus videos and resources, discounts, episode transcripts, and more. So what are you waiting for? Join today at patreon.com forward slash first class life. Again, that's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash first class life. Self-neglect is real. Yeah, that's self. And it's, it's, it's self um, implicated. It's self, we, we do things to ourselves in order to please other people, right? It's, you know, we, we leave ourselves out of the equation, right? Like, okay, I'm not going to take care of Trey because I have to do this. And, and it's so good what you just said it is cheating on ourselves with something, cheating on our working 14 hours. You're, you're not self-care. That, that's not self-care. And I know we some bosses and some high level. That's not self-care. That's self-neglect. And you can't neglect yourself because you wouldn't want your partner to do that to you. Right. You won't want your friends to do that to you. But we do it to ourselves often. And we have to really learn how to have self-care as high functioning leaders. Right. Leadership is one, taking care of yourself as a leader. You are not a good leader if you're not taking care of yourself. And I know that just stepped on somebody's toes. You, you are not a good leader if you are not taking care of yourself.
That is poor leadership. Mm -hmm. So you need to reevaluate some things. And, and sometimes we can't take care of ourselves because we have too much on our plate from other people, whether it be relationship, whether it be job, whether it be family, whatever it is. Sometimes when we are overwhelmed and out of sorts with ourselves, we have to sit down and look at our plate and say, what's one thing I could take off my plate? Right. And it might be something fun. Maybe you don't need to go to the bar and have martinis. Maybe your body is telling you you are dehydrated because alcohol dehydrates you. Maybe your body is saying instead of going out to that Sunday brunch with your girls drinking unlimited mimosas, maybe you need to go to the spa. Right. You know, just sit by yourself. And one thing we don't like to do, a lot of us, is to spend time alone because then we have to look in the mirror at who we are and some things don't show up in silence. And the silence all some things gonna show up about you, but that's okay because you have time to work on those things and all of the things won't be bad. One thing I learned from um, growing up was I did not like to be alone because I grew up in an environment of always having people around. So when I got mm -hmm. to that point of self-discovery and it was time for me to be alone, I was like, I need to call somebody. I need somebody to come over here. Why am I by myself? This is scary. But it got me in touch with who I was and who I really wanted to be. Like, I, I had so many masks of, um, of expectations of other people. You should be this, or you should be that, or you should do this, or you shouldn't do that. I didn't even know who I was. I couldn't even hear my own voice. So I had to silence the incoming traffic to say, who am I and, what, and who do I want to be? Like, what, what, is the, um, what is my definition of happiness, right? What is my definition of solitude and peace? And at that point, when I got to the point of where I discovered who I really was, and this was like an epiphany, maybe not too long ago, that, you know, people with branding and no offense to people who are brand experts and all of that other stuff. Everybody was telling me, you all over the place. You can't talk about this. You can't do that. You can't do this. I finally discovered that I don't have a lane. I have a life. Many things have affected me. Autism has affected me. Losing my mom from breast cancer, right? I'm a survivor right? From the other angle. I'm a survivor because I live without my mother every day. Committing adultery. All these things have affected me to where I can help other people because my purpose is to serve the people that God assigned to me through my gifts, talents, and experiences. So how dare I not help an autism mother because I'm an executive leadership coach? How dare I don't help mm -hmm. a family because I'm an autism mom? How dare I don't help them heal from the devastation of infidelity? So for so many years, people will try to put you in a box. And I'm not saying be sloppy all over the place and go do something because you see somebody winning at it. I'm not saying hit your wagon to somebody else's star. I'm saying there are experiences in your life, Lindsay, that you've been through. And it's not just one to help the people, to serve the people that have been assigned to you through your gifts, talents and experiences. And so many times we've been put into this box of Lindsay is a, a host of a podcast. This is what she does. Now, Lindsay is a host <laughs> of a podcast. Lindsay is a wellness expert. Whatever those things are, you get to expand as long as they all come from the same tree. Mm -hmm. I like that. You get to expand as long as they all come from the same tree. And it makes me think of values and what are you rooted in. Yes. Right? You, many trees and trees have roots. And we do like to just put ourselves in the one box and the one title and the one expectation that was placed on us by somebody else. And we forget that we have all these other branches. And what's important is that the main trunk and the roots are firmly um, settled or, or that firm foundation in your own values and your own yes. beliefs. And then you have your branches out from yes, there. Yes, because you, when we do that, when we put ourselves in a box, if I'm just an autism mom and I'm just helping autism families, I'm leaving people on the wayside. I'm somebody's lifeboat that been through an infidelity and adultery. They are waiting on me. How dare I fail them, right? I'm somebody's lifeboat whose mother is dying from cancer right now, who I can encourage and say, the treatments are so much better from 15 years ago from when my mom died. Don't lose hope. This is what, this is the process I went through. Ask for help. How dare I not help that family because somebody wants to put me in a box of just an executive leadership coach. I'm not just that. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lane. I have a life. There are experiences where I have to get off the highway to go help somebody and get back on. People say, stay in your lane. And I and I looked at a post that I put up maybe 10 years ago that said, stay in your lane. That's what I was saying. Because people had told me to stay in my lane. And as I grew, I'm like, even on the highway, you have to switch lanes to get off. 
even on the highway, you have to switch lanes to go around somebody who is blocking your path to your destiny because they're going too slow. And, and, and so be it. Might be an old lady in the car that only can drive 45, but I have to go around her in another lane to get to where I'm going, right? I might have to exit and make a right turn and get back on that highway, but there is no way in the world that anybody should stay in their lane. Now, you shouldn't be all messy all over the highway doing too much. Again, like I said, a lot of times we get distracted by the bright and shiny objects. Oh, Lindsay did a podcast on this and it's doing well. That's That has nothing to do with my life. Everything that I do when I go from lane to lane has something to do with my grounding, my roots, my experiences in my life. Now, I'm not going to come over here and say, let me do some finance coaching because I see such and such making a whole lot of money off that. I cannot tell you how to budget. I'm going to mess your money up. I'm going to mess your money up because I'm still trying to learn how to budget mine. So my point is you can go into other lanes because you have gifts and talents. You have more than one gift, more than one talent. You just have to know and be mindful of your reason why. What is your intention? Why are you doing this? Are your intentions pure? Everything I do comes from pure intentions. Everything I do comes aligned with integrity, loyal, loyalty, morals, values. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to go do what Lindsay doing because Lindsay making money. Because what, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but sell his soul, but lose his own soul? We got to be mindful of why we're doing things. I love that because it's so important that we're mindful of why we are doing things and making sure that we aren't doing things because somebody else told us that we should be doing it, but understanding like what are our values and you'd be surprised or well, you being in this field, you might not be surprised, but a lot of people don't understand their values. And, you know, you talked about decision making skills earlier and it plays right into that because whenever we understand our values and what it is that we stand for, what we believe in, what is non-negotiable in our lives, then it becomes easier to make decisions because we can weigh that decision against what we believe. Ooh. Like, all right, is this aligned with Ooh. my values? Is this align with my beliefs? And if the answer is no, then it's an easy like, all right, let me kick this decision to the curve. If the answer is yes, then you go into action planning and say, okay, now how do I fit this into my life? Yes, um, that's so, so good, girl. What that's I so good. Come on now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so what advice would you give to uh, the first class family about how to develop their sense of values because like i said a lot of people don't know what they stand for. first uh, let me just say this if you don't know what a core value is i'm gonna need you to go google that and i'm not judging because i used to be you i didn't know what core values were many years ago people are like what are your values and i'm just like um what is she talking about right you're about what is important to you right legacy right legacy is legacy important to you family is family important to you Go find out what values are. A lot of people just can't answer because they just don't know. There is a list of values on Google, right? Because a lot of people come from dysfunctional backgrounds. They parents, they sit down and say, Trey, what's your core values? What are our values in this home? Values weren't even displayed to me in the home where I could actually see them and feel one of our most important things is family. That wasn't, I didn't see that. Now, some people grew up and they saw that, that my parents are big on family. So one of my core values would be family. Like we are big on family. We go to dinner on Thanksgiving. We do this, we do that. You just really have to go and do research. And again, go back to your blueprint because there, even in dysfunction, there were some good things. My mother instilled some good values in me. My mother told me, used to tell me all the time, right? But she instilled this in me, right? Because it was her biggest fault too, one of her faults. She used to say to me, Trey, you, Tracy, you are loyal because my name is Tracy. My mother only called me that. Anybody else who calls me that, I'm not going to pick the phone up because I know you're a bill collector. But my mother used to say, Tracy, <laughs> you are loyal to a fault because loyalty is one of my core values. I give it because I want it. But my mother taught me that mm -hmm. my mother was loyal to everybody. And it wasn't a good it wasn't always good for her because sometimes she was loyal to the wrong people. But she saw that and she used to tell me that. And now in my older years, it makes sense to me. You're loyal to a fault. You, you don't be, you're not going to be loyal to people who are not loyal to you. And it's not tit for tat. You're not going to treat anybody wrong. They just don't belong in the front row of your life. They're not loyal to you. They, they don't stand on loyalty. Their core values don't line up with yours. Integrity. 
a person who does not have integrity, their values don't line up with mine, so they're not supposed to be in the front row of my life. I can love them from afar. Hey, up in the balcony. And then some people I've gotten to the point where you're not even in the building of my life. You don't belong in here. You don't even want to be here because you're showing me by how you move. Your, your, your character is, you know, you know, you be around a person whose character is funky. You like the content of your character ain't right. Right. Because if money will make you do somebody dirty, you got to watch out for those people. But you got to have discernment and wisdom to see that when somebody shows you who they are and it's cliche and we say this all the time, but it is the truest thing ever. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Fool me once. Mm -hmm. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Mm hmm. Listen, and then J. Cole says, uh, uh, <laughs> for me three times, you know, load the Glock and that rain on you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but this is important to talk about because our values are so important, especially when we think about our relationships. I think understanding your values can help you determine who to keep in that Girl. front row seat and who to in the balcony because i i'm like you i am often loyal well i am loyal but i'm often um to my yes. own detriment i can be to a fault where it's hurting me more than it's hurting the other person and i really had to grow and learn and improve upon that as i got older into my adulthood that you know everybody's not going to be loyal to you like you are loyal to them. And I know that it hurts that people don't treat you the way you treat them, but it's important to, like you said, discern that and know that, well, they just aren't meant to be so close. Like you can still be loyal to them, but loyal from a distance. They don't have to have that front row VIP ticket to your life and, and you know, to your intimate moments and to your experiences and things like that. And being okay with like, I love you from across the street. And, and, and you know what, Lindsay? They don't even want that front row seat. We got people in mm. front row seats that don't want to be there. They show up because the food is good, right? But, but <sighs> this is how you know they don't want to be in that front row seat in your life because they don't invite you in the front row of theirs. When somebody's giving these wow. events or somebody's family functions and this and that, and they don't invite you, and they don't have to. And this is what I learned. My feelings used to get hurt, but I'm like, this is where they want me in their life. They they want me sitting by the kitchen at the wedding. They they didn't want me at the front table. They they want me in the over here. They don't they don't want to be in the front row of my life. So how dare I force them by inviting them to give them the swanky invite or to say no, you're going to sit at this table because this when you sat me over here, I've learned and this is one thing I learned. I used to really cut people off. Now I don't cut people off. I just simply let them go in the area of my life where they want to be. If you show me that you're inviting me at this level, if you're inviting me at general admission, I'm not inviting you at VIP. I don't invite you at general admission too. Because again, they don't even want that responsibility of VIP. So we got to be mindful of where we're placing people and the pressure that we're putting people in to show up when they don't even want to show up. They're like, why don't she invite me? But I know it's going to be open bar. I'm going to go and get this good food and this good look. You know what I'm saying? I don't really want to be there, but hey, it's a free meal. Let me just show up. And then the next the next thing Ooh. comes along and they invite you again to general admission. You don't get the, the, the um, VIP um, pre-reception. You come and you sit in the back row and you get to watch the show and they don't even acknowledge your presence in the room. I don't go places all the time mm. anymore. If you're not going to acknowledge my presence in the room, I don't belong there. I have people that call me personally and say, you, are you coming? And when I walk in the room, they see me and they, they come over to me. Now I've been to events where I didn't even see the, the guest, the host. So I could have stayed home. <laughs> I drove, paid for parking, paid that toll to go over the bridge. This person did not even acknowledge me in the room. So it would not have made a difference if I was there or not. So I'm very aware of being places that mean something to me and the other person. And I'm not saying everywhere I go, people got to acknowledge me, but I'm strategic with where I show up because my time is valuable. And I'm going to say this to you. I thank you for having me here, right? And I had to learn this about myself and I want everybody listening to learn this. It is a privilege to be in your life, Lindsay. 
You are allowing me a privilege to sit here and be in your life. And it's a privilege to be in my life. So when people don't um, appreciate that privilege, the privilege gets taken away. It is a privilege to be in your life. You don't have to talk to me. You don't have to sit here with me. It's a privilege. Thank you so much for allowing me to pour into you. We got to learn that. It's a privilege to be in our life. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. It is a privilege to be in your life. And, you know, the sooner that we can understand that, then the easier it is to let go of those relationships that don't serve us. And I don't mean that in a selfish, do what I say type of way, but, you know, all relationships serve to some capacity, one way or the other, or equal exchanges. Yes. Yes. And, and so it's important that we recognize those relationships that are no longer serving us because they can often drag us down and hold us back from the people that we are meant to serve, from the impact that we are meant to make. Um, so putting those people in the proper places, you know, it makes me think of, um, I, won't, I won't say her name or anything <laughs> like that, but I know, this, I know this certain someone and she would always complain about such and such is always doing this and you know such and such is always acting like this and when such and such is around blah 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 and it was like well you have been friends with these people for this amount of years and like at this point <laughs> like you're constantly complaining about it it's either you accept them as that's who they are and that's how they want you in their lives or you find new friends like one or the other like because obviously they've shown you who they are and how they operate and you are choosing to continue to be in their lives, to continue to be in their presence, to continue to show them and and serve them how you do and they're not doing the same thing. And so you got to let it go or stop complaining about it. That's what I say to women, right? Because I have also have a movement called hashtag no side chicken where I encourage women to honor, guard, and respect each other's relationships, right? In hopes of ending the infidelity epidemic. I encourage women to honor, guard, and respect each other. If a man is in a relationship as a woman of integrity, it is on me to say, you have a wife, girlfriend, fiance, situate, whatever it is, don't come to me with that, right? That don't, don't, don't come to me with that. And at this point, when it comes to us as women, dealing with with um, men cheating on us and our families being separated. It's not them anymore, it's us, right? Like you said about your friend complaining, it's not them, it's you, you're, you're allowing this. And as women and as on a whole, it's not them anymore, it's not the men anymore, it's us. A man can't cheat if there's nobody to cheat with. We are in a society right now where women are saying yes to other people's husbands knowingly. And I'm not knocking any woman who doesn't know. You, you don't know, you don't know. But if you are knowingly sleeping, cheating is a form of abuse. And if you are knowingly sleeping with somebody's husband, boyfriend, or fiance, you're an abuser, sis. If you are knowingly sleeping mm. with somebody's husband, boyfriend, or fiance, you're abusing another woman. Just because she don't know your name or never seen your face, she is balled up somewhere crying, hurting on account of not only him, but you. Right. So again, that point of it's not them anymore is you. We have to take accountability. Your friend, you well, you you hanging out with these folks. That's you. That ain't them. They ain't forcing you to come to their house. They ain't forcing you to sit around while they gossiping. Cause when, when you leave, if they gossip with you, they gossip about you. Mm, that part. So get yourself up from the table of gossip or get yourself up from the table of whatever them people is doing that you don't like. And don't don't put yourself in that position anymore. It's just, it's just so simple, but we want to blame people. Again, I said blame causes guilt. Accountability causes growth. As long as I'm accountable in my life for the things that are happening to me, I'm growing. You're not going to treat me bad and be in my space. That's not, you're not going to be over here gossiping and bringing me down and be in my space because I'm going to either you know, tell you, you know, maybe you should tell that person. And if you keep doing it, then you get exit stage left out of my life that's so good like first class family i hope y'all are tuned in good okay with your notepads and your pens <laughs> if you need a notebook you can buy it on firstclasslifeshop.com shameless plug i know that's <laughs> right listen bills got to be paid okay 
Right, right. Um, but, you know, definitely this is an episode to go back and listen to the replay. All of the episodes are, but so many different things were dropped here and there that we didn't even expound upon. And so um, it's important and it's crucial to so many facets of our lives that we don't even think about. And so just thank you for your candidness. Thank you for being raw. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing on behalf of all of the first class family. And you are a part of the family now. So hey, girl, hi. it's your energy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for doing this. This is so necessary. Like this, just, just keep walking in your purpose mm -hmm. and in your light because this is so these conversations are so necessary and, and the way you bring it with candid, let's just talk, let's just, let's just go where it goes. It, it's so necessary, Lindsay, I'm telling you, and I've enjoyed this conversation, really, really enjoyed this conversation. Yes, yes, me as well. And so I had to pull up the lyrics to uh, Escape. Yes! <laughs> 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 and it's so crazy because I know the lyrics, I know the song, I like Escape, but then whenever I was trying to think of the specific line, I was like, I can't get it right because you were talking about, you know, um, being the abuser whenever you're cheating and, you know, how people are okay with being the side chick nowadays or the side dude, you know, boyfriend number two, uh, the side chick, whatever it is. And uh, like understanding that you are becoming a part of the problem because if there is no one to cheat with, then that person can't cheat. And so there was a very specific line. Oh, come on, come on. Where is it? It was. I love it. I love it. We 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 have to go ahead. No, I found it. I found it. So this part it gets me every time, and I always like cringe just a little bit on that part, even though I'm still thinking all the words, because I'm like I would not like that. But I like being in the same room as you and your girlfriend. She don't the know fact that she don't know. Me on really turns Woo. me on. She'll never in a million years going on. Got this thing going on. I'm like, what is wrong with you that you like that? Like, that would make me uncomfortable, awkward. I would not feel good on the inside. That's where those morals and values come in, though. That's where those morals and values come in. So many women who would think that way are insecure and they think that they're getting something good or they're getting one over on another woman when they're actually um, abusing themselves when they're actually lowballing, when they're actually eating a not even a low hanging fruit, you're eating the fruit that fell on the ground and got rotten. You you're eating the crumbs from the table. Mm. And we have to continue to instill in our young women now, right? Because I'm a woman of a certain age. We have to continue to instill in our young women that you deserve somebody who values you. You deserve somebody. How dare somebody make you a side chick? What what does that say about how they think about you? that you think so lowly of yourself that you would take second. And so many women are, and they have to realize you deserve way better than that. But you have to know that you deserve better than that. You have to know that you mm -hmm. can't allow somebody to treat you like um, the, the red ring around the baloney. You have to know who you are. You have to know your value and you have to go back again. This all goes back to our blueprint. This all goes back to the behaviors that we saw growing up. This all goes back to the thinking that dysfunction is normal because somebody instilled that little seed in your head. They planted that seed in your head. Get what you need. Oh, to have a man is better not to have a man. It's better to share a man. Oh, there's a shortage of good men. No, there ain't a shortage of anything on this planet. It is your mindset, right? And we, we as women, we have to hold men accountable. This is how we stop this whole thing. By holding men accountable. I'm not doing that to my sister. My that's my sister. My sister has a mother. This this woman has a mother who's gonna go through this with her. Sisters, best friends. Think to yourself, would you want somebody to do that to your sister? Would you want somebody to do that to your best friend? Would you want somebody to do that to your mother? Would you want somebody to do that to you? Because trust and believe when you come out of that cloud of insecurity, deception, and low self-esteem, and you find a man in your dreams. You are going to look over your shoulder for the rest of your life, knowing the content of your character, what the content of your character was. Again, you got to forgive yourself for that, but you need to stop now because, again, you reap what you sow. Your, your thoughts, your words, and your actions are a boomerang that's coming to find you. 
Be careful Ooh. what you think. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you do to people and yourself because it's coming back to find you. A boomerang coming back to find you, y'all. And and in the same way that you don't want to directly be a side chick or a boyfriend number two, also equally as important, make sure that you are not side chicking yourself to and boyfriend yourself. number two in yourself, like we talked about earlier, okay? Make sure that you are prioritizing you and valuing you as number one. And again, not in a selfish way, but we have to prioritize ourselves so that we can continue to make the impact that we are destined to make. Yes. Trey, girl. Put the mask on first. Put the mask on you first. Mm-hmm. Didn't I tell y'all this was going to be good? I told y'all. Y'all going to believe me one day, every time coming at the end of the show, like, girl, that was so good. Like, I told y'all at the beginning it was going to be good. Like, <laughs> at this point, that's why we're here, okay? That's why we're here. So I have a, a little game that I want us to play very quickly. Let me pull up my timer. It's a very easy game. All I'm going to do is say, what is your favorite? Insert blank here. And you answer. Oh, okay. See? Yes. Easy peasy, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, but you only got 10 okay. seconds to answer, okay? So there's that part. And if you don't answer in 10 seconds, then the first class family has to um, do whatever it is that they decide to do if you miss the buzzer, whether that's take a ah! shot for every missed buzzer, or run an extra lap, do an extra push-up, read an extra chapter of your book, <laughs> whatever it is you decide because it's hashtag no judgment zone in the first class family, Okay. So we'll start off with an easy one. What is your favorite movie? Norbit. Go. <laughs> well, I was just watching that a couple weeks ago, actually. And Respucia. I love Norbit. You know, ooh, that movie. So next up, what is your favorite drink? Go. Moscato. Oh, any particular um, kind? No, I like Stella Rosa. Stella mm -hmm, Rosa is good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know that the wine drinkers are going to, um, they're going to shame me on this one, but I like Moscato Diasti. And they'll say, that's not real wine. And look, I'm not Girl, a real wine either. drinker, okay? I can, drink it out the jug. I can drink it out, um, like, you know, those cooler cups. Like, it nope. don't got to be in a wine glass. It don't got to be in a big <laughs> wine glass. It's going to drink the same, okay? Like, you know, to oh, no. Fill me up, fill girl. Me up. You, my, you my kind of girl. I fill my glass. Why well, I got to get up twice? Let me just, just, come on now. Fuck a sister up. <laughs> Exercise while I'm relaxing. <laughs> like, um, what is your favorite book? Author the Four title? Agreements. No. I can't think of the author right now, but I love the Four Agreements. I had it sitting right there. That Don is one of my. That is my favorite. That's my favorite. Keeps me out of trouble. Mm, I can literally <laughs> don't assume anything. Okay. Mm hmm. Um, what is your favorite song, artist, and title? Burn by Usher. Ooh, let it burn. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, yes, we could definitely hang out, all right? So uh, what is your favorite place to travel specifically? Um, I'm not really a travel person. I'm a homebody. Mm -hmm. Is there any place that you like to go to just like when you want to resort um, somewhere? I, I love the park. Anywhere outside is good for me. I'm a nature girl. Okay. Okay. So nature, the park, things like that. Yeah, I don't really, like I'm not really a person who likes to fly. I did go to Utah one year to visit mm -hmm. my brother, God rest his soul. And it was beautiful. Just the mountains all the way around. Utah was, it was beautiful. It took, it took my breath away. Ooh. Okay. Okay. What is your favorite activity to do to relax? Listen to R&B music. Go. 90s. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Turn on Sirius XM and head it to uh, yes, the Fly channel. Mm hmm. Uh, whoops, I started the timer and didn't even give you anything. Uh, what is your favorite season of the year? I love summer. Go. I love hot, hot 90 degree weather. Oh, yeah. Burn yes. me up. Summer, summer, summertime. <laughs> Burn me up. 
<laughs> what is your favorite uh, phrase, like catchphrase or saying? It's never too late to make a U-turn. Mm. It's never too late yes. to make a U-turn. You don't have to keep going in the wrong direction. Okay, that part, because oftentimes people do feel like, you know, I'm too old to do this mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever they want to throw in there to not yes. change directions. And so I like that. Well, thank you for playing uh, first class favorites is what I call it. And I need for everybody to know that make sure you are a member of our private Patreon community because you get bonus perks. OK, you get bonus video content from our lovely, phenomenal guests. And you get access to our first class favorite things of oh. playlist. Uh, we have a reading list. We have a song playlist to get our music on. We have our favorite places to travel and our favorite activities because, you know, we prioritize self-care yes. in the first class life family. Okay. And they are uniquely curated by all of our phenomenal first class life guests. So mm -mm, you want access, join our Patreon community. All right. So thank you for playing. Now, I have one more question for you. And this one is about yes. intentionality, okay? okay? And um, just understanding that First Class Life is actually an acronym, okay? It's an acronym of all the characteristics and skills that you want to embody into your life, that you want to intentionally embody into your lifestyle to create a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. And so if you want to find out what that acronym is, you can do one of two things. You can either, one, go listen to the very first episode where I explain them all in detail, or two, you can buy the book for First Class Life, 10 Key Factors to Creating a Life Full of Purpose, Fulfillment, and Happiness on firstclasslifeshop.com. Um, but meanwhile, we are going to ask the beautiful Trey, which key factor of First Class Life do you feel that you resonate with the I'm most? going to say self-discipline. Because I believe mm. self-control is the beginning of winning. I believe if you can control yourself, the world can no longer puppet you, right? When you can't control yourself, people can control your emotions. They can make you act out of character. So as long as I am control in control of myself, self-discipline, nobody can puppet me. Nobody can make me feel any kind of way. Nobody can make me react a certain way. I can respond, but I won't react. So self-discipline, I love I like that, especially when you yes. said nobody can puppet you. That's so, yeah. so true. Thank you for sharing. So um, tell the people how you serve the world. What do you do? How can, um, you know, they they work with you and things like that? You how can you work serve? with me as your life coach, as your healing agent. I help people heal from the devastation of betrayal. And it has grown out into not only infidelity, but, you know, trauma, betrayal from not having a relationship with your mother. So I'm big on helping people heal. I am a healing agent. I can't heal you. I am the Neosporin to the most high, whoever you believe in that can heal, that will heal you. But he uses me as the Neosporin. Mm, I like they that. They got Jason like Safe Farm. Yeah, so if you, you got trained a <laughs> healing agent. <laughs> Okay, yes. and flow from progressive. <laughs> you are the conduit from which yes, everything happens. There you go. There you go. So if you need some healing of any kind, make sure that you reach out to Trey, all right, and allow her to bless you on your healing journey. And speaking of reaching out, how can everybody w find you? I'm com. I am all things at Trey Kearney. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And again, everything's my name. I am Googlelicious. Nice. <laughs> And we like it That's when everything it. matches yeah. and it's easy. Sometimes people are having 50 different names and it's like, wait, what? Right, right. So thank you for being an amazing guest. Do you have any final advice for the first class? My final advice would be take care of you. Love yourself. That's all. And if you love yourself, everything will fall into place. You need to come first in your life. And it's not from a place of selfishness. It's from a place of wholeness, a place of being healthy, a place of being healed. Because if you are not whole, healthy, and healed, you are no good to the purpose that was intended for your life. 
Mm. Get whole, healthy, and healed, y'all. Y'all heard it here first. Well, that is another wrap for the First Class Life Show. We want to thank you for being here. We know that you can be doing anything in the world right now, but you are spending your time here with us, and we do not take it lightly. So thank you for being a part of the First Class family. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you comment, rate, love, share this podcast, this show out, this video out, however you are tuned in. Because if it blessed you, it's definitely going to bless somebody else, and they have no clue that it exists. So it's up to you to share it and share your nuggets on social media, okay? So meanwhile, continue showing up as the high achieving leader that you are. Know that you are worth it. Continue maximizing your impact and creating your first class life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness because you deserve it. Until next time, bye guys. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. But please be sure to subscribe to the First Class Life Show. And don't forget to rate, leave a review, and join our private community so that we can continue to provide you with great personal development conversations to help you maximize your impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. You deserve it. Do you want to be surrounded by other high achieving women who are working on their goals just like you? Are you looking for your circle that's passionate about their own growth yet still wants to see you shine? Do you desire to be supported through collaborations and connections instead of competition? Then Cowork and Chill is your place to be. Cowork and Chill is a hybrid of virtual co-working and virtual networking. It's a community of women who are striving to build living legacies. This is the space to create meaningful relationships with other equally yoked women where you're being poured into just as much as you pour out. So if you're looking for your crew for supportive accountability, then sign up today at coworkandchill.com. That's C-O-W-O-R-K-A-N-D-C-H-I-L-L coworkandchill.com.